This video my 10 best tips on how to snorkel deeper and besides that all the footage in this video is going to be shot with the Insta360 1X2. If you're new to this channel my name is Gert Leroy helping you master freediving. Tip number one the breed up. So the breed up is the time that you spend before your dive just to relax to get into the zone. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to breathe and what's going to be your body position? So first of all breathing. We're not going to do any kind of specific breathing uh, techniques. We're just going to breathe normally. Small inhalation, small exhalation, just normal normal relaxed breathing and we call this tidal breathing. We're gonna do this through the snorkel because well this video is about snorkeling right so you're gonna use a snorkel. So the position will be on your belly floating on the water face down. So you're gonna use a mask, you're gonna breathe through the snorkel, you're gonna float on your belly and just become comfortable with that position, become relaxed and when you are relaxed enough then you can take a final breath which is tip number two. So the final breath is a big sip of air that we take right before we hold our breath and why do we do that? Why do we take in as much air as we can well to hold our breath longer of course so we can stay down underwater longer. So how are we going to do this? First in the belly, inhale through the belly, one, two and then towards the chest, three, four, five. So take around five seconds to do the full final breath. When you have taken that big, big, big breath, the final breath, we're gonna do the duck dive. But before we talk about the duck dive, I wanna say a little something about weights. So that is tip number three. What kind of weights, how much weights should you use? Well, we're talking about snorkeling here. So you're probably just gonna snorkel with shorts on or some t-shirt or a lycra, but for sure no advanced uh, or professional uh, freediving suits. So why am I saying this? Because a suit makes you positively buoyant and that's why freedivers, we use weights. Now, if you're not using a a wetsuit then you don't need weights. So for snorkeling my advice is just don't use weights at all. No wetsuit, no weights. <laughs> So tip number four, the duck dive. So the duck dive is the easiest way to break the surface. Now breaking the surface, that means you're horizontally on the water. Remember the breathe up, you're floating on your belly, breathing through the snorkel. So you're gonna go from this position into a vertical position. So how are we going to do the duck dive? Well, you're floating on your belly, breathing through the snorkel, looking through your mask. You're gonna kick once or twice to give yourself a forward momentum, extend your arms. Then you're gonna lower your arms in a degree of 90 degrees, just to point out the direction you're gonna go. And then you're gonna duck your head into the water like a duck, that's why we call it the duck dive, and follow that movement. So at the same time you're gonna lift one leg out of the water and the weight of that leg is gonna push you down. And then at that same moment you're gonna do one arm stroke to propel you even deeper underwater. <laughs> Tip number five, the snorkel has to be out of your mouth. Now, we're talking about snorkeling, so you're using the snorkel to breathe through, but once you do your duck dive and you go underwater, you don't need that snorkel anymore. So take the snorkel out of your mouth. If you would keep the snorkel in, and unfortunately, some people do that, that's actually dangerous because water can come in the snorkel and then water gets in your throat, or when you come back up and you have still this uh, snorkel in your mouth, how can you start breathing again when there is a snorkel in? So snorkel out of your mouth once your duck dive is initiated. Tip number six, the body position. So you want to be straight. So the number one problem that we see in beginner freedivers or, or snorkelers is when they do the duck dive, they're looking down. So when you look down like this, you're looking down where you're going, your body is in a banana shape. You don't want to be in a banana shape because it's not hydrodynamic. It creates a lot of drag and it will make your duck dive and the rest of your dive so much more difficult. So I know this is a bit counterintuitive, but you have to keep on looking in front of you. So when you duck dive, you're going that direction, but you're looking over there. Now snorkeling, there can be some corals, there can be rocks, so you have to be cautious where you're going. So momentarily you can look down where you're going, but most of the time just keep on looking in front of you and if you really want to know where you're going, momentarily look. Tip number seven, the kicking technique. So apart from the body position and your duck dive, you're gonna have to kick the fins, right? This is snorkeling, so we're gonna use two fins. Whether those are long fins or short fins, it doesn't really matter. So how are you going to kick the fins. Well, imagine that your legs will be straight. In reality, they're not going to be straight because there will always be a little bend in the knee. But I want you to think about that. I want you to visualize keeping your legs straight. If someone would shoot you with a camera, you will see that your legs are not straight. They will bend a little bit in the knee, but that's fine. Just don't bend too much. We don't want to do a bicycle kick. A bicycle kick is like bending the knee too much. And uh, yeah, we see a lot of scuba divers do bicycle kicks because they don't really need to propel themselves forward. And 
point your toes. So you do not want to keep your foot like this. You want to point your foot. So knees bend a little bit and point your feet and then kick like this. Tip number eight, equalization. Now, what does that mean, equalization? It means that you're balancing the pressure that comes from the water, from outside, with the pressure that is already inside of your ear. So there is a little airspace inside of your ear, and when the pressure of that airspace is the same pressure as the pressure that comes from outside, your eardrum, which is in the middle, will remain in a neutral position, and that's good. But what happens if you don't equalize? Well, there will be more pressure, more pressure, more pressure, and eventually that eardrum will be bent inwards. If you do not put that eardrum back in a neutral position, which we call equalization, then it will start hurting and eventually you will rupture your eardrum. Obviously, you don't want to do that. So you have to learn to equalize. Now, there is two methods to equalize. There is Valsalva and there is Frenzel. Valsalva means that you are using your abdominal wall, your muscles here, to bring air from here towards your mouth and your nasal cavity. With that air that is here available, you're going to blow into your nose while pinching the nose, something like this. So the pressure builds up, the air will go towards your ears, and you will equalize. Frenzel is a different method. You're not going to use your abdominal wall anymore. You're going to use the back of your tongue as a piston to push the air that is already here towards your ears. Something like this. Now, why am I doing this with my mouth open? Obviously for a reason, to show you that the air that I'm using is not in the front of the mouth, it's in the back of the mouth. So. When you're doing this, you're using air that is at the back of the throat, pushing towards the ears, equalizing the ears. For most beginner snorkelers or freedivers, equalization is the limiting factor. It means that equalization or the lack of equalization stops them from diving deeper. If that is your case, let us know in the comments. So experiment with these two kinds of equalization and be sure to never feel pain in your ears. If you feel pain and you can't equalize, then come back up and try again. And last but not least, the recovery breath. When you go down and you turn and you come back up, you're gonna, at some point, start breathing again, right? So. We call this the recovery breath. After you hold your breath, after diving, you're gonna start breathing again. How are we going to do this? We're gonna inhale five times, five big inhalations, to get in as much air as possible, because we've been holding our breath, so oxygen levels might be a little lower. So we want to replenish those oxygen levels as fast as possible. So imagine you've been running around the block. How do you look like? How do you behave when you're a bit tired from running? <sighs> That's how the recovery breath looks like. Five of them and then your dive is finished. And tip number 10, and this is probably the most important of all, and I should mention it in every single video, never dive alone, always dive with a buddy. If something happens and you are alone, who's gonna save you? Who's gonna help you? If you become anxious, if you get in panic, if you get stuck somewhere underwater, it can happen. If you're spear fishing and you shot a big fish and the big fish is stronger than you, who's gonna help you? Peace in every breath.